So it should be no surprise to any of you that I'm not a huge fan of the ONN streaming box. I've talked about how I dislike it, but with all of its faults, it's still extremely affordable. And you, as the user, should at least know how to set it up so it performs at its maximum capacity. So today we'll be going over for the ONN streaming box and the stick right here, how to set it up to perform at its absolute most powerful capabilities. So if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button right down below. Give this video a big thumbs up. And like always, for the first hour to two hours of this video, I will be answering all of your comments down below. You'll even have a chance to be featured in my next video. Today's comment comes from Gallen Clausen, who said, nice video. Thanks, Gallen. Let's go ahead and get into this little tutorial. Okay, so I went and booted up my ONN streaming stick. I'm not going to do the box, but we'll do the stick. It's the same settings, basically, and the same stuff we're looking at. Now, the first thing I want to point out is, remember, this ONN streaming box has no Ethernet port on it. All right, so right away, with no Ethernet port, no USB ports, I'm almost positive you can get an adapter for this USB micro that might give you Ethernet capabilities. But the first thing I have to point out is the fact that you could have internet issues with this device. If I go to my internet connection right here, you're going to notice I have full bars of Wi-Fi. So you can see how it's shaded and all the way. That's a good thing. That means this device's internet is most likely running at almost its capabilities. But a lot of you might have one bar shaded or two bar shaded or three bar shaded. This is going to greatly affect the performance. That's why I always say if you can get an ethernet connection, do it. That's going to affect how you're streaming it, the buffering and all that stuff on at least the unofficial apps for sure. And sometimes on Netflix, if you have really slow internet. So try to make sure you get those bars up by moving your router somewhere closer, getting Wi-Fi boosters. Um, if there is an adapter for it, I'll make sure I post it down below in the description just so you guys can get an idea. But that's kind of my first trick, guys. You want to have those full bars. If you don't have those full bars, you're, you're in for a rough time with your ONN streaming box, particularly because these aren't already the most powerful. Um, so you want to make sure you're maximizing your capabilities. But that's my first little trick. Now we're going to go through a few different other tricks as well while we get through this video. This will all be pretty much done through the settings menu so you can just access it here. Um, we're going to ignore accounts and sign in because there's really not a lot we have to set up there. But I want to start with going to our apps. Now the ONN streaming box does not have a lot of room on it. In fact, if we go to device preferences and we go to about and we go to our, I believe, is it status? No. Go to our storage right here. You're going to see you only have 4.4 gigabytes of internal shared storage available left. So, oh, actually 3.7 left. So even less, right? Because your operating system does use up quite a bit of that room. So as the updates go through, etc., I always suggest having at least two gigabytes for your internal storage. Okay, so that does not leave you a lot of room for apps. So you can follow these tricks in order to at least maximize the amount of room you have. So the first thing is to go into your app section, click on see all apps. And I suggest going through and deleting any app you don't use. You can see which ones are using up the most amount of space, like Google Play Store, you're not going to delete. That comes on it. Prime Video, you're probably not going to delete. But let's say something like maybe I'm done using FX File Explorer. I can go and uninstall it. That's now going to open up that amount of room. Now, a lot of people waste room on games and stuff like that. You might play once and then forget about. Go in, uninstall them, delete everything you don't use. That, that helps you a few ways. It stops them from running your background if you don't force close often. And it's going to get rid of the cache. And it's going to get rid of that space that's on there. So do that, guys. First little trick. Um, once that's done, one thing I suggest doing every so often, you can get a one-click app to do this, but I'm going to show you the long way because it's always available on every device. Click on the app, and you want to make sure you force stop apps that have been opened, okay? Any app that is open is almost always running in the background until you force stop it, even if you close it. Now, the reason for this is because, you know, it keeps the progress of what it was doing. So next time you open it, you'll go back to where it was, for example. Um, now for stop it, once you force stop it, that is going to stop it from running in the background. And sometimes that even fixes issues with it. I also suggest clearing your cache from time to time. Now your cache is just this saved up memory, which sometimes actually does help, um, with the performance, but clear it from time to time. This can build up heavily in some apps. Like I've seen apps with like 50, 50 megabytes of cache, right? So make sure you clear it. You're going to notice that that builds up over time. And then of course, 
if you really need, if the app is not working, clear data. Clear data sets it basically like it was the first time you ever installed it. So it's a nice little trick to make sure it's performing at its best. But those are kind of the small little tricks I suggest doing with your apps. You can also go to app permissions, and this is where you can set all of the different permissions for different apps. So such as location, right? Some apps need your location in order to be used, right? Some might need access to your camera, your microphone, etc. And then there's also some special app access here, things such as energy optimization. A lot of this I wouldn't suggest touching, but if you want to go through it and play around with it, you definitely can. But this is usually has to do with how the actual system runs. So don't bother touching most of this stuff, in my opinion, just kind of leave it alone. Although I know some of you are now going to go through this and touch it. So we'll see. Now we're going to go into device preferences, the setup remotes and remote ac uh, accessories. It's not much to do with performance as much as just a little bit of help. So I don't want to touch that too much, but we want to go to device preferences. Now, one thing you can do here is go to the about section. We want to go down until we find our build. So it should be this one. And you're going to see as I'm clicking on it, I clicked on it around six times. It's going to give you access to be a developer. Now, this is important because this now opens up a secret hidden menu all the way right here called developers option. Now, developer option has a ton of different settings that you can play around with that aren't usually available in the settings menu. The thing I suggest is always make sure when you're trying something new that you know where it was to start, okay? You don't want to change something, mess it up, and then can't remember what setting you changed. So just mark down which one of these you're changing and trying out, but there's a ton of settings here that can not only improve performance, as we scroll down here, I'll talk about a few of them, but can also improve just the overall layout of what you're doing. And the first ones we're gonna talk about are this anim, anim geez. <laughs> transition animation scale, animator duration scale, uh, and then window animation scale. Now I'll show you what transition animation scale does right here. So we're gonna click on it. It's at one X right now, which is the default setting. Watch what happens when we do it to five X. Watch. Okay, wait, that's the wrong setting. Let me, let me go back. I was thinking of animator duration. Okay, watch what happens when we change this to five X. You see how slow that transition is? These are related to your movement inside of the device, right? So as you move in the device, these different kind of built-in animations that happen can be changed. Now you're like, well, why would I want it to 5X, right? Why am I going to have that? You're not, to, to be honest. But what you might do is turn your animation off. Watch what happens when we all of a sudden turn these animations all the way up. Look how much quicker your device is going to move. And it's not moving quicker because it's more powerful, but it's moving quicker because you got rid of that animation. Watch, you see how that's instant now? There is no animation whatsoever. Now that might trip you out a little bit. You might like the, the 1X, but you might even just like the 5X, the 0.5X, where it's like a little bit cleaner. The quickest option though is animation off, and that's going to cut things out and just really you know speed it up a little bit. Now there are a few things in here you can do, such as force your GPU rendering, which forces the use of the GPU for 2D drawings and stuff like that. Um, there's one in here where you can also, uh, where are we, where are we, where are we, where are we, where are we? Background process limit. So this is the amount of apps that can run in the background. I suggest going to around three, okay? That means you can have up like Prime Video, Netflix, and your other favorite app all at the same time, and they'll be able to keep those processes running in the background. And I believe it usually goes off of the last three that are open. So that could change a little bit. And then I, I believe after that, it will force stop them, if I remember right. Um, and then there's a few other things here that you can check out as well. But those were the main settings I thought that would at least help your performance a little bit with your O&N box. Now, as for performance, there's also the display section where you can check out and kind of change your uh, screen resolution. For the most part, keeping auto on is probably the best option. But you can also change it based on your TV. So if you know what your TV's max settings are, you can go in here and set it up based on this device's capabilities. So if the max setting for your TV is 720, 60 hertz, then that's what you should probably change it to, right? To make sure you're maximizing that. They also have color space settings where you can change between the few different options and then color depth settings as well. So you can play around with those. And then of course, screen position, which isn't necessarily um, you know, something to improve on, but you can, right? You can see here as I click on it, change it as it zooms in and out just to make things a little you know fit the screen a little bit better based on where the current position is so that's pretty much everything for today's video like always if you want to purchase a vpn that can help stop your internet provider from throttling your internet 
plus give you access to tons of content libraries from different versions of Netflix and other streaming services that you might already pay for. I have the best possible discount down below upgradeguy.link slash expressvpn. It brings you to my personalized discount. You can try it 30 days free. They also give you a bang and discount with it. I get a kickback, so it's an amazing way to also support the channel, and I really do appreciate it a lot. If you end up purchasing it, let me know down below, and I'll make sure to give you a shout out in the next video. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you have any tips that I might have missed for your ONN streaming box, let me know down below, and make sure you hit that subscribe button before you leave. I'll check you guys in the next one.